conscientious that's holding water, right? Holding quite a bit of water. So, set this off to the side. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. It's pretty heavy. I mean, you pick this up. I don't care. You guys can do that. That's a lot of clay. Like, if I'm going to do something with that, if you were to run that through the kiln, oh, it's not going to turn out well for you. Make sure you utilize that. Put that clay to use. If you have that much clay on the bottom, you can still keep that. You might even just keep it like it is and trim it for fun next week or at some point so you can see how much clay I trim off and you're going to be going, is there anything left? Well, that's how you get light work. Don't throw it as dense as you can. You're not feeding anyone's ego but yourself. Get comfortable. Trimming is part of the process, okay? So trim. Don't be afraid to trim your work. And you can see I'm making a mess. They expect to make a mess when you work bigger stuff. It's that simple. Expect to break things more. Expect it's a little more expensive. You waste clay. You can do that my piece. You're still in trouble. You're on video again. Cussing. Dang, again? I'm going to have to report you. We're going to have to have a conversation. I know. Like I said, I did break this one. Please swirl up. Right? So, don't worry about it. Okay? So with that, I've already got this one pre-done. This is the one that Kathy kind of seen me do earlier. It's not really centered, okay? But it gives you an idea. We're going to see a plate next. i got to find my bathroom holes. So, this is probably the hardest part if you take something on and off the wheels, to find the holes without getting the chamois too big. So what I like to do is find one hole and then let the other one fall in. So you've got to find one hole. Did you change? Okay. Well, there's what? Did you change? Yeah. yeah. My question is, yeah. is yeah. I, in order for yeah. to make it that yeah. wide, yeah. you know, yeah. when you're throwing it, making it that wide, yeah. I actually, sometimes I have to use my whole forearm. Yep, yeah. yep, you can yeah. totally do that, and that's fine. Like I said, find what works for you. That's just another technique. That forearm is no different than this tool. It's just another tool for you. Or can you... I use the forearm because I know I'm compressing. Mm -hmm. But can you, you share about your compression? No. Huh? You share about compression? Well, it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna discuss yeah. that further with you guys, so you don't freak out on. You can way. also you can also go in and pull it out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Totally. So what he's kind of talking about is when you're coming in, and you're centering. If you don't have the hand strength, that's fine. I don't expect you to. Maybe it takes time to build that up. You can come in and hold yourself. Steady, like this. I didn't show you guys what he's talking about. So. Because yeah, you're, you're not, you're, you're not yeah. allowing you gotta it to happen. You've got to use your whole forearm. So when you're doing it. But I think it's, I guess it's deep right? enough by the clay. So what's happening usually for you is it's doing to me right now. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it's grabbing me. It's grabbing my hair. That always feels really awesome. And then what happens is oh, it's catching it. out here, right? <laughs> so. You gotta keep your arm lubricated. So my guess would be, grab a sponge and pull it in there oh, and pinch. Right? But this works really well to do it. You could even do it left arm and come in and do that. For me, if I was doing this technique, I would do my left arm. I wouldn't do my right arm for one reason. It's easy for your arm to slip away. Okay? It's really hard for the clay to push me when all my weight or my body itself is behind it. It's like a brick wall. Right? So I can just lean on. That gets you going. And then you can come in and do this. Right? And work it down. That actually works really well, bro. Yeah. To do that. You know? Because I do it the opposite way because I'm left handed. Yeah. Yep, and that's another thing. You know, if you're throwing left handed, just be aware that the wheel is you know, in one different direction. Probably. So you could use the same same thing in these time now. Come in and, you know, I'm not muscling it. So I'm going to have to get this wet all the time. Right? Yeah, exactly. You're going to have to get away. You can see. There's so many techniques to do it. And this is a great thing. Another thing I always teach whenever I teach any class, you are all teachers. It's that simple. You're just paying me to help guide you, honestly, and show you some of the tricks that I know. Um, because you all have something amazing to offer. Watch each other. See what's going on. If Kathy gets something really great, or you're like, damn, it's really not looking so good, learn something from it. Because that's something to learn. There's always something to learn. I think someone said that earlier in here. Maybe I was wrong. Alright, so I'm just guiding that clay now. You're going so great. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be a problem, right? Don't do that. So okay. don't do that. Guide it. And if you really can't get it to go where you want it to, 
Maybe you need to just turn it off. The needle tool. Needle tool can work one way, right? So with me, something that can happen is that bat can fool me every now and then because it's longer in areas, and if I rest my hands on the edge of the bat, gives you a problem. So always stay away from the edge of the bat in my experience. The other thing is, is I still have a layer of clay in between the bat and my hand because if not, you just press in like the email on the bat, you're gonna get some real awesome calluses very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They start out as a burn and then work down. So I'm gonna take that clay from the top and work it down. Notice my hand shape. I don't know, it's just something that I'm moving by. Right? Okay. So this is a plate, a point of view. It's going to be a hefty, crazy big plate. So if I was going to probably do a normal plate that I was going to keep, I would have a wider back because yeah. I like a wide base plate. Right? If not, this is going to have a massive flange. It's just going to come out. Which is nice. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. cool too. Notice, right, that's okay. Don't freak out about it. Roll it down, okay? So it's coming from the top down. And voila, I'm pretty much center. Honestly. Work in sections. Don't muscle it. It's not worth it. Right? Especially the way for me today after a little bit killing the heck. No, I'm not even working harder than that. <laughs> so I'm ready, moving forward, okay? I'm gonna have a problem, right? Though, because it's a little off. So I've just found that if I know where my center is and drop my knuckle in on that area, I create my divot that I'm talking about. I'm going to create that divot here, same thing. This is where I don't want to really do this because now I've got my hands like some kind of spider man. That doesn't work so well, okay? Because um, you've opened yourself up, you've made yourself exposed. So this is where that other technique I was talking about earlier, I'm going to dive in, okay? And it's something that you can't really see taking place, but it's happening. And it's not absolutely perfect. Notice that I'm not totally perfect in my work. It's okay. Um, it's darn close. Like when I throw it home, it's pretty crazy. I try to be as compulsive about things as I can, but when I'm done with it, I want to teach you the way that it should be. Have fun with it. Don't get so crazy knocked and worked up in your work. Um, it's just, I don't know. Have fun with it. You know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You can make something look perfect as long as you're in control. Okay, so I'm going to get that set before I actually start to do the other sponge in the in between, okay? Getting enough moisture in there. As soon as it starts to catch and gets dry, get some moisture up in there. Even if that means you reach inside and do it. So now it's kind of like what Philip was talking about where my hands are, I want to say, um, getting away from me. Did you notice how it was kind of undulating and acting goofy for a second? That was because I had my fingertips too far in. I was trying to pull. And as you do that, I find that it'll kind of walk you around a little bit. So if you kind of keep the outer stretch beyond that, and then right before, you invert that edge to give yourself a 90, it works better for you. It won't walk you around. It won't let you talk. Because at that point, your hands are the only thing working more. If you use this part, it can't move that. That doesn't flex, right? Your fingers flex or not. Just keep that in mind, okay? So, if I had a really big bat, this would benefit me for one reason. Can anyone guess why? What do you see happening to my head? Yeah, coming over the head. Coming over the head, a problem real quick, right? So I gotta stop, essentially, right there, because you go over the edge, well, you went over the edge. That's <laughs> um, There's no going back from that. Let's talk real quick about that compression. Um, try to say this still not so loud so everyone hears it, but that's a load of shit. <laughs> it is. It's a very simple part of my French, guys. Um, but I have a whole problem with that. Notice I'm removing all the slip as much as possible. You are not compressing the clay any more than what it came. Or when you slammed it and wedged it, any of that. What you're doing is you're taking out the memory. Um, right. So it's not a lie to you. The problem is it's the wrong vocabulary. As an artist, we should be telling you you're taking out the, the spiral memory, you're removing the slip. But we say you're compressing the clay. 
which mm -hmm. is just actually giving the board, yeah, you're giving right. it memory. Yeah, and you're giving it memory of what you're doing. You're taking the memory <laughs> out of it, but you are not compressing right. it anymore. I promise you. What you are doing is you are adding um, the spiral, right? Not so much the spiral, but you're getting rid of the spiral. I thought I had. I didn't see, this is my problem. I do this at home. Uh, see. Yeah. So I lose my tools all the time. So next week you'll see how. Um, with that thing, I always, always stick my tools back in it just because I know that it's there and it's really nice and convenient. But I won't start with that right now on that one. I like to start with my blue one. Um, so I'll get it wet, but I try to not have 10 ton of water in the bottom. I like to start with the round side and then flex it because it'll go flat, okay? If I start with a soft rib in the beginning, I can move the clay around where if I start with a rough, hard, jagged rib, I have a problem. Not really compressing this clay though, I promise you. Not compressing it. There's no way to compress it. What you're doing is you're evening out. And you see what came in there? All the slip. That's the crap that's going to give you an S crack. You're not compressing it. Change the vocabulary to what? Who was listening? Spiral. Oh, not spiral. Yeah, yeah. Memory. You're getting, you're getting rid of that. You're getting rid of the slip. It's that simple. You're, you're, you're evening out the bottom, but you are not compressing it. I'll have an argument. Very thorough, in-depth argument. If you find another artist who wants to come otherwise, and I'm probably going to have everyone in here knock on the door because she doesn't want to go talk to them. But, <laughs> um, you can't compress that clay anymore. You, I mean, you kind of are, but you're more or less just easing it out. Like my bottom, you see how undulated and crazy it was? Mm -hmm. Now I'm coming back in and I'm getting rid of that with the ribs and tools. Right? So stand on the right side of the wheel just like you normally would. But notice if I come in, this tool right up front. Imagine how... Um, how hard it would be, abrasive. I would have taken off a lot more clay. Are you pushing pretty hard down on it? Or? I mean, so this is the same conversation about where I was having with the wheel moving forward. Mm -hmm. Not really applying hard pressure. I'm keeping it steady, right? So I'm not letting those bumps push me around. So when I feel a bump come, I try to stay. You'll see that happening. And it's not that I'm applying pressure to like bounce it back. I'm kind of working with the bumps, kind of like hitting a speed bump and saying, nope, I'm hitting it bump. to move. And if it's not going to move, it's going to tear off because it's just in the way it's slick, it's nonsense. You can see how much of that I'm moving. These people such disdain about the slip. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? You're like, it's just slick. Well, it, no, and I, it's <laughs> well, a great I, thing. You can throw a slip, you know, try to get rid of as much water as possible when you're throwing it, it's going to benefit you. But you see now how I'm at a certain yeah. point. That's a really good example of you can see slip versus clay. When I'm down the clay, I've compressed it enough, honestly. Okay? Um, I, I don't compress anything mm -hmm. except when I do plates, and that's only because I want a flat bottom. Other than that, I don't crack work. That plate, I did that intentionally, drying it forcefully just so I could show you just for this class. So I love you a lot because I don't do that. <laughs> So, with that being said, I'm not worried about that little mountain in the center, you know, it's okay. Move forward, I'm going to try to get this to a point to where I can get it to stretch and try and do a clay, right? So I'm grabbing that clay, creating my lift down at the bottom right by the wheel head, okay? I'm going to move up. I feel I have an air bubble. So, I am kind of what you guys would call a power throw. And the reason is just because I, for a while I got into doing like production tiles, like not production tiles, production tile work, okay? So I move a lot of clay very fast. The reason for that is you get in, you get out. I don't like when those banks out, so I meant for them, don't worry. But, <laughs> um, no, you try to get in, you get out. Pretend that this is acid or something. You get in, you do your motions, you get out. The less pulls you can do, the less you're going to water rock the clay. And the more you can actually go farther, that's not that big. Honestly, I should be able to have gone huge. Um, you did that in like four pulls. Well, yeah, but that, I don't think Scott was in that class. Were you in that class that I did in the back room one time where I had a bowl like this big and I collapsed it in front of that class? It was 25 pounds of clay. Were you there that day? Yeah. Yeah. That's really what you should be able to do with that much clay if you're utilizing it properly. I mean, obviously, you want to try to use as much of the clay in the throwing process as possible. If not, do what you can and then trim off the rest. Like, I know that that. 90% of that clay is, is here, like of what's left, it's all in the foot. I could do some really fancy, crazy, deep foot. Why do you want that on a hole? I, mean, I don't know. But you're the creator, right? So 
be my guest with that. Um, same thing, you know, it doesn't matter. Find the sponge that works for you. Set it up, okay? So get that lip down here. So any questions so far? So the other thing is, is do you guys see how as I'm throwing, the wheels changing speeds? Do you see it happening? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let it talk to you. So you're giving me crap about pulling in two poles. Yeah. No, we're pressed. No, it's not crap. You're giving me crap. No. All it is is it's trying to get in and get out. Um, yeah. Now, what situations would you collar the clay in right now? I wouldn't collar it right now because I'm in control of it. It, you know, as soon as you start feeling like you're getting out of control of it, control it, push it back in, right? But right now, I'm going to actually start trying to work this into a plate shape. But that's why you would collar it. Yep. So, so you're going to be in control. kind of amazed because I'm going to make this go from something that's really thick to something that's really thin because you're going to expand. Okay? Right. So I'll, I'll try to do one more pull out of this and see if I can push my boundaries. Because I always like to know what my limits are. If you don't know what your limits are, then you don't know when to call it quits. So if you've done it, not you were in that class I did that bowl and when I collapsed it. Yep. So I mean it you get better use out of your clay in that sense of things. Try to anyway, right? So I'm gonna go back in one more area down at the bottom, add in water, just like normal. I'm not worried about doing this yet. You can if you want. You know, two poles, you wanna make sure you're in control. Okay. Really what I did is I got rid of all that slip. Okay. So I'm gonna come back in, make that lip down at the bottom. I want to try to use this as much as possible because I still have about, I don't know, it's pretty thick down there. About two inches, maybe an inch and a half-ish of clay down there. It's quite a bit of clay. So make use of it because if not, I'm going to turn it off here. And it becomes part of the turning process. But it also becomes part of the turning process for your foot. Because if you have a wide area, you can flare out your foot and trim in and trim in your foot at the bottom too and make it match. So if you cut that away, even though it's extra wasted clay now, not waste later. It, it gives you shape options. So when people tell you, oh yeah, you throw really big, shut up, I got plans. <laughs> Just know, well, you know what's going on, like I said, inside your head. So if you come to it with an idea, you have that idea, fine. Now I have a problem, I'm getting to a point where I'm tall enough that I'm like, ah, so I'm getting over top of it, okay? This is where it's really easy to let your fingers start to do weird, odd plays, if you will. But you still need to stand strong. So I'm setting myself up with that foot area, the base, the lip, if you will, okay? Feel that it got kind of dry with me playing like I did. So add some water, add some water back in my sponge. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can move some of the clay down the bottom. As I start to lift this up, I wanna try to let off pressure-wise once I feel that I've got that lip to blend in. Notice as I started to feel it go goofy, it let off the gas, if you will, right? That lip just kind of pull off. But I moved most of the clay up that I wanted to. But that weird, odd shape that I had happening, I got rid of it, okay? So now I'm going to double rip it, because now this is when I'm going to start to get fancy with stretching it out. And if I don't stretch it, or if I haven't ripped it before I stretch it, that's when you're going to lose everything when you're going to play. Because you're literally going to take this and you're going to flare this bad boy open, okay? You can do bowls like the Chinese oriental type that are angular. That's how you do the same idea. Except you would have whatever base you're doing there. Okay. Um, so, I think I'm using these two. So, I'm going to put this one on the outside because I want more of a rigid shape. I'm going to do the round because I can control, I can flex it. Same thing with this. Okay. I'm going to compress my walls. Really what I'm doing is I'm holding true and standing strong, if you will, with the outside rib, trying to match the inside rib to that area and press out. See how long it's taking me? It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Go boss. Just gotta remember to bring me here. Trying to remember to come in here and intimidate me or what? <laughs> well, I was expecting something. Different. The gauntlet's thrown down. <laughs> this is more is this, so, is this the bowl or the platter? Or? No, I just kind of, this is going to end up being the platter. So 
So I showed them the bowl, but I pressed the limits and I didn't go that far with it. I left the lock to trim off so I could show them the crazy that deep look. But I'm not trying to scare them off at me. Come on. <laughs> I did that in other classes and they were like, oh, we'll that, that. That looks like the first section to a 100 pound pot to me. Yeah, and this is what I was talking good about. This is what you guys are going to see when you walk in their class. You're going to see the bottom. And I'm going to show you how I actually set it up, right? But if you were going to do to shape your bottom, you draw out your base. I don't care what shape it is. If you start with that, you know the, the shape, you just keep adding sections and create the shapes, okay? So come in with a couple ideas of what you're looking to do and what we try to stack on, right? So I've compressed the outsides on the inside of the wall. Compression. You actually are compressing that in the sense of you're making it all the same. What you're saying is it's also making it stronger, right? Yeah, in this sense of things you are. But otherwise, <laughs> you know. Right, so now I'm going to do the stretch this out. But if I'm going to stretch this out, I have a lot of extra down here. Do I want the extra for my shape in the long term? That's up to you. If not, I definitely at least want to make sure that I have a perfect circle to make my life a little easier in the next process. Okay? But I do know from experience, and I'll give this to you, I uh, would like to say with it, um, is that if you leave too much play down here for the next step, when you go to push it down, you're going to get these weird ripple fat people mark kind of things, and I'm a fat guy if I can say that, right? But if you have that happen, it's going to fludge out on you. You have to have a fine line of what's going to happen down here. There's too much clay, that's going to happen. Too little clay, it's going to collapse on you, right? So, I'm going to start to try to flare this out. This may be a good time to get that tool off. We might be going to have done that. Notice how I do that? It's kind of bad, right? There's always a rib for everything, right? As you can tell, my toolbox is pretty organized. So it's like I told you, never do that in my office. Because it's just experience. The more you're doing it, the more, like, I knew that I don't have, so that one that's flat, that's not long enough. Right? If I start to stretch that open, as I do that, there's a tool you need. So I'm going to take a lot of your tool. Right? Okay? So I'm going to start to stretch this open. We'll see what we can do with it, and then I'll hit it with the deep gun, and I'll just keep stretching it open to show you. But essentially, that's day one. It was all down. Like I said, I could possibly have done that one. Next time we come in, it's all you. Nothing but you guys doing what I showed you. You work with it. If you get a play out of it, hey, heck yeah. If not, you just practice and you've seen the technique, that's great, because you're going to still need the centering process for all the next techniques. Okay? Cool. Because essentially, this is what you're building off of. So I'm adding that moisture. Before I do it, I'm going to come back in, though. I want to be in control. I want to make sure that that's not going to go anywhere. I want to make sure it's right where I want it. Okay? Outside's fine. I'm good to go. So I'm going to take this, get it sturdy. Get myself in a position. So you don't know why those are actually in most of your tools. It's for grip, leverage, right? For your fingers. It's not to hang them on the wall and fancy or whatever, but it actually has a purpose. Okay? So I'm gonna feel like I have control of this. Find my, my spots. How many of you guys have ever seen me do a plate? I think Philip has. I've seen your plate in first classes. The yeah. first classes when we were doing it. Yep. So this is how I do all my plates. So I have a very small cylinder. And it's thick. It's going to expand it. It's going to thin out. That one over there on the table is the same way. Not this much clay. Honestly, this is the least of clay. Because I should have went taller. But it works. Right? Oops. Man. Not this time. So interesting. Yeah, good job. Cussing all over my wire TV. Notice I gouged the bottom. I'm going to have to come back in and address my bottom. Okay? And that's the reason for having a sharp end. Yeah, if you have a sharp end, this one doesn't necessarily have a sharp end, but I can still come back in and address that, okay? But at least now I know where my bottom is, and I can go from that point. As soon as I feel it catch, either you adjust the wheel speed, or you give it a little walk. You keep going, and it's going to ripple on you. It's going to get goofy. So another thing, <laughs> you'll learn a lot of hard, hard lesson. At a certain point, know where your things are around you. Yeah, that's exactly right. Do I have a problem, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I would have a real problem. Okay. Know where your limitations are.
limitations are. If you're going to expand past this, you've got things in the way, okay? So just be aware of that. That's why another it's nice if you guys there's less of you in here, because you can work with that. At a certain point, I'll have to stop and heat torches, but I'm not even close yet. I may not have to. We'll see what happens. You can hear the wheel changing speed here and there. Notice I got one slight little problem happening. You see what it is? In the bottom. It's the bottom bulging out. Here, right? It's not so much bulging out, but remember that area I was talking to you about down here where it kind of does that weird thing? It's telling me it's a little thick down there. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Where is my blue rib? Or maybe not. So I'm going to actually come in with a rib just on the outside. Press for that area right here on the bottom. Make it neat. Notice it jerks a little bit here and there. It's okay. Okay. This is where that double ribbing comes in handy because you can control the clay all the way up. Okay. Lock that out of the way. We don't want you guys to see some of the finished clay. So if I was doing like a bowl, you can see how this is going to start to just be a certain shape bowl. You can even stop a bowl. Right? You can turn a bowl into more than a bowl and go bigger. Right. So at a certain point. You get to be a deciding factor. You want to get to that oh, we're not even close. No. Well, I haven't enough. I can hit this with the heat gun and keep going forward if I want. So down here where it's bulging out, that's your soft spot. Okay. You don't want to lose your piece. This is where you come in and you keep hitting it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. I said it's about time. Oh, I thought you said it's about done. I was no. like, no, no, let's just get going if you want to keep stretching out. No. So what you could do is decide. Remember how I told you the no-no technique where you come in with like the round and you hit? You can do that right now before you do it because this will go goofy on you, right? But then you can come in with the heat gun, heat that up and keep your shape and then keep flaring it out on the top and get a, a different kind of shape play. Or you can just keep stretching it, but if you keep stretching it when it indicates to you like this where you have a bulge, that bulge that I was talking about, that's a soft bulge. That's where you come in like I'm doing. And this is probably the worst example for you to see. You do this, rinse it out, dry it out before, because if you come to class next week and it's like this stuff, so all it's going to take is you crinkle it up, kind of thing that you're going to be doing for so long. Okay? But it works really well in that sense because I'm just going to want to get in there. So, I'm kind of that, right? I have two of these. So it's going to get loud, and I'm going to crank them down so they get really hot. And. It's because they're running all that stuff in the back. So I tried this earlier and it was fine. It's getting tough on the camera. <laughs> Let's see if the other one will work. We're going to kill the whole thing. That way, really. I just want to see if one of them ready. So, I might not be a good idea to run two of them on the team out of one. Shouldn't have been a problem because I did it earlier and it was not an issue. This is saying. It's not, they're all not the same breakers. Either. No, this whole thing runs off of its own breaker, so mm -hmm. it should have been an issue. But what I am playing in the wall right now, checking the it's off, it's backwards, has its own breaker. So maybe if I put two guns on two different outlets, kind of thing, that should be good. It should be. So if you're going to do this, I always put green on my handles because I know green is good, red would be bad, black is bad, okay? Because they're going to get hot. You can see how hot they're getting inside. The more you clamp down in this area right here, and no air getting in there, problems. So if you set these down, you have to do something, it's very easy to just reach to go back and grab it and go, oops, now we got a really big medical problem, okay? So that's why I put green because both of the handles are black for me. These are both over at Harbor Freight, about 40 bucks work really well. Honestly, when I can't use my torch, these work just as good because it's forced air. So when I start doing inside of bases and I can't use a torch because it's starving of oxygen, this is what I turn to. I use the heat guns because these get to about 1800 degrees on because they blow some serious hot air. Different than a blow dryer. These are really good though. You can smell them. So. No, no, this is just me egotistically speaking and I'm impatient. Honestly, I want to get this done. Two benefits you though, because I can put one on the outside right here. Mind you, this is plastic. Don't ruin bicentennial wheels, right guys? I'm on 
give it some gas, right? I like to take my foot off the pedal when I'm doing this because I can then concentrate on what I'm doing. If I keep my foot on the pedal, it's really easy to get goofy, right? So I can control where this is on the outside, control where this is on the inside, give that some heat and get that hot. And I'll show you when it's the right idea to stop and when it's not. So if you've got two, you can see how this benefits you. Because if not, I'd have to go from in to out. If you have two, I'll have these here next week. You guys can use them to try it out. Don't waste your money. Um, just to give it a try. One thing I used to do in the past was you could try any tool out of my toolbox. I'll open that back up under one condition. Because I only have five of them in here and I can control you. You've seen how crazy tidy organized my toolbox is. If I find it out of organized, I will have a personal talk with you outside of the grounds. Okay? Because my tools are like my life. And then I had stopped sharing my tools with my classes because my tools started walking off. My tools are, are like my huge investment. You know what I mean? All my ribs mostly are custom made and stuff like that. You see how I have the top all like set so I know everything is. Put them in there so it looks like it did. It looks like an art over there, right? Clean them up and make sure they're really nice and clean up. I kind of like my tools that way. However you treat yours, that's your own choice. But if you want to check something out in my toolbox for different ribs, you can check it out. Same thing with these heat guns. I'd rather you try them to see what's going on than before you do it yourself and spend the money, right? So I'm going to stop it real quick just to see where I'm at. What I'm looking for is to feel the clay. You have a right feel. And when I feel the right feel, I'll let you guys know. I don't know how you touch it. Not quite there, but before I get there, I want to come back in with that metal rib on the outside. Clean off my debris. What I was going to say is, these are really handy because of those switches. Mm -hmm. Some of the other heat guns I've used, you have to really fumble around to find that switch. Is this is just forward. Well, the other thing I like is, you don't have to put it at the 45 like you have it. You can put it so it's like straight down like this. That comes with it? Mm -hmm. yeah. This comes with it. So this comes on and off. I like that. Bling water and play everywhere. And you can see the different placements of it. So if you're really cheap, go in there a couple, two different times with a 20% off coupon. Go to your car, come right back and buy it again. They can't tell you it's a different visit. I've done it. I've done it. Yeah, so, right? So you can see you put it here, if you want, you put it here, you put it here. And when you really get lazy, like I do, sometimes I'll literally see where this chair is sitting like that, yeah. take the splash pans off, and I'll go do something for a second, turn my heat guns on, and you sit. And, it, yeah. and you don't have to sit right there, you go kind of to something else, right? But these run on cold, and you can control your heat like that. I think they're kind of nice, personally, but you know, they're not everyone's cup of tea. And I don't know what your pocket book looks like either, so. Um, obviously, this is my career, so I have a lot of freaking money to invest in. So. <laughs> um, down here, coming back in. What I'm doing right now is I'm beveling that back up. So now when I come back down and I have heat torched it, if you will, I keep calling it heat torch because I just use a torch ball, mind you, okay? When you heat gun it, you get it into the position you want, it'll stay there now, hopefully, before you cause yourself a problem. If you use a metal rib, see how I gouged it right here? Yeah. Be wary of what your tools are doing. Just think about it, okay? So be aware of where your ends are. Because if you have a problem, it's easy to do with metal tools. Hence, why I like using tools that have rounded edges. They're less likely to do that. Are you still making your own metal ribs, or do you buy those? I make almost all my tools in there. What and kind there of are some that, like, obviously I didn't make. This one with all my trimming tools. When it comes time to trim it, I made all my own trimming for the wind stuff too. For me, that's kind of one of those, like, it's kind of cool to know that you made your own tools, you know? Um, I'm not going to lie, I was going to run that tool workshop as you guys seen, and it's even in the booklet, but I already canceled it because not a soul signed up for it. Hmm. So, and I can't justify not coming in, you know, or coming in for one person when I can spend time with my daughter on Sunday, so I can't slip it out. So, my apologies, you know. Um, the rig working make shop and the tools. There was the three classes. It was going to be the metal tools, um, the Steve tool, and then also like the wooden ribs that you're seeing right now. Like all those long ribs, or any of those wooden ribs in there are my ribs that I've made. Most of them, I mean, you can buy ribs very similar in shape, 
they're going to cost you a lot more. Yeah, I've had to find them like that, though. So you couldn't find any like that? I have a hard time finding them. Like, it takes me a while. Yep. And, and even them. when you do find them, you, sometimes they're not in storage. you got to buy them online, and then you get just in hand with them, which is a stinker. So one big problem is, is and I nicked it, and it's no big deal, you know? Hot. Plastic. Hot. Yeah. Just be mindful of that. You can see that they're still going on the inside. If you let these go for like 15 minutes, they're really hot, right? Mm -hmm. So just be aware of what you're doing, right? So be aware of your surroundings, and maybe even if you're doing stuff in here with each other, separate yourself by a wheel if you can, or whatever the case may be, okay? So I'm gonna keep going forward. Okay? So you got 15 minutes. Let me uh, let me touch it, see where, yeah. where, where it's from. I don't know where I'm at yet, so that's why I haven't said anything. You can kind of feel how the clay is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not sticky. No. But it's, The outside is a little sticky, but the inside mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll tell you right now, before I actually fully stretch it, if it's where I want it to be. Because the only way I can know is by feel, by, by seeing what's going to happen. So I'm not worried about the inside so much as I am the outside. Because the outside is what's going to structurally hold up for everything else. Right? If that makes any sense. Thought I heard my music kind of a little too loud. I was going to say, I thought I turned it down. So I'm changing the rib for one reason. Because I would rather press that to an area to where I can start to flare it out. Right? So it's actually easy to take a concave shape like this and then turn it into a nice flat shape. You'll see why I say that in a second. And it feels like it's probably right, honestly, Philip. I'm gonna let you guys feel what the outside feels like so you can see what like I'm talking about. So you can see how as you're doing that, you have you know a bowl, you can have whatever the case may be. And then when I go from here, you guys want to feel that outside and feel what it feels like it's slightly tacky. Yeah. yeah we'll but it's, it's this got was some a lot of dry feel to it hold up, right? From that point, I'm going to stretch it and just keep seeing where I can go with it. Notice I'm not worried about this top edge at all yet. I'm not even addressing that. That's one of the last steps you do when you're trying to even address that. So now at this point, now I can keep going and press from that area and go down. If it feels like it's gonna collapse on you, you torch it again. That simple. That's where they're coming in and being your best friend, if you will. It's that simple. So every now and then I'll hold my hand on that outside area. Just make sure that that doesn't pull away. I want that to go down. But really, what's gonna be your key to getting that to go down is next to it. On the inside, notice I keep digging in deeper and deeper. It's fine. That's why you let yourself give room, right? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. You guys getting anything out of this so far? So I know. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting like nauseous. It's like. Okay. I left this really thick on purpose because I knew it was going to probably dig in there. I can then work that back and forth. When yeah, you're done. You can, and it's not a big deal. Make it more of a I mean, you could even have left the design now where you come back in and you chatter it and you give yourself a technique or you bounce chatter it with the rib too and you give yourself like. A moon flower texture. I mean, get crafty. Think about what you're doing with it. If you start like that, you'll know where you're going and what to do. So easy. <laughs> Try and not to do that because that's what Jessica told me. She was like, don't scare them off. Okay. <laughs> I think it's like, I can see the logic behind it, but it's like, you're going to get Well, it's one thing, so when I'm doing stuff, notice how I engage the clay slowly. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. it's a really bad way to say it, but like you're being in the hands with the clay. Yeah. Think of it as it's a gentle touch, whether it's a child or not. That's a really bad way to say it. Going from infant to That's right. <laughs> but you, you're trying to do the same thing. I'm just watching you. <laughs> well, that really took an interesting way from child to intimate to excited. <laughs> Yeah, but the idea, idea is, is yeah. it, you should be gentle with the clay. You should ease it into position. Same thing with this. I'm not being forceful. You see how long it's taking me to do it? If you just ram it down, I've done that before. You end up with stretch marks in your clay. That simple. If you heat towards the outside too much and then stretch it, you will end up with stretch marks. Um, does 
business. But stretch mark analogy makes sense. Does everyone know what the heck I'm talking about with stretch? Okay. About the same thing that Sony Silica does. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. So you can see how I can just keep going and going and going. It'll tell me when it's going to go. I'll be able to feel that the clay doesn't press back at me. If it's not actually pressing back at you and you're stretching something into a plate like this, then it's going to collapse. The second you feel it say, hey, I'm going this way a little too easy, you better hit it with the heat, the heat gun. That's simple. If you do not feel it, and what I mean by that is you'll actually feel a pressure, a back pressure against the rib. Not like just normal clay, but it'll be kind of pressing against you. You're not feeling that. I repeat it once again, if you're not feeling it, it's on its way to folding over and collapsing. Hit it with the heat gun. But you see how I have a really nice flat shape in here, and it's just simply coming from a rib, right? Um, I don't know. See what happens. Plus, I left it really nice and thick. You know, you have options. It shouldn't give me an issue with being this thick. Can you actually pull it out more if you want to? No, I personally don't. You know, some people will come in and actually pull more and more and keep going, right? But I'm not one of those people. Now, I've heard sometimes, because I've had it happen when I've stretched it out, and then it bisques and it goes up. It won't go back up if you do one thing, and that's kind of where I was getting to towards the end of everything here, is I was going to finalize this area. So she's leading us into our next step. You see this, this bulge down here that I was talking about? Right here, you see that bulge area? Yep. That's almost always going to happen when you use the technique I'm showing you right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get past it, except you throw it thinner. So you take off some of that girth down there that I was talking about, and then you heat torch it. Problem is, is a lot of times when you do it, that girth is not there, and it can't hold everything else up. Right. It will collapse down, almost guarantee you. So you wait until it's another thing. Yeah, yeah, and you trim it, right? You just simply trim it. It's the next part of your process. Yeah. You trim that off. You shape your face. You shape all the fancy stuff. If you wait 15 minutes, 20 minutes with this uncovered, it's going to flex up. Hit it one more time, and it will not move in the firing process. Okay, also remember that if you're going to high fire like this right now, you don't want to go too flat. If you go too flat, it will lay down the rest of the way in the process. It'll, it'll literally get itself down. Um, unless you have it really thick. You know? But even then, I've seen it crack. Along areas like right here, it'll mm -hmm. just split and pull down, or in your weak spot, it'll do that. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to take this. I'm going to press up in this area, try to get that to level itself out so it looks nice and not lose the piece because I'm kind of breaking a cardinal rule, the same as what I showed you guys on that bolt when it folded over. If this area was soft right there, and I'm doing what I'm doing, it'll collapse. It's too soft. So you got to know. You got to feel the clay out. It's going to tell you if you listen to the clay and visually see what it's doing, but also feel it when it's fighting you in the rib or not, it'll talk to you. I promise. It's talking to you all this time. You just haven't realized it. Maybe you have, but it's doing the same thing in small scale, large scale. Okay? So from this point, I don't have to come in and trim anything out. If I was really compulsive right there, you see that? Yeah. You could get rid of that. And it stops. It's not too vivid. I'm not too worried about it. See what happens right now after I do this. We'll see if it changes up. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier, but I know that it's got a little bit of rigidness to it to where it shouldn't collapse on me or do anything goofy. I'm shaping my clay on the edge. Right? I'm giving it a nice soft appearance. Hopefully I don't collapse it. Because normally by this point, I'll come in and I'll heat gun the whole thing so I don't collapse anything, okay? So if I was to continue to fix this, we've got about six minutes, seven minutes left. If I wanted to finish this out and make this a true plate, which I might just stay and finish it out so you guys can see the plate trimmed within this process throughout it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat gun the heck out of this, get it firmed up. Because if I come in right now and work this back and forth, it's gonna, exactly, it's gonna fall down. It's gonna slump itself down, okay? So don't do that. You gotta heat gun it up. Or don't do what I did. Don't make yourself a funny area right here. And that's fine. It, it's okay. This is part of the process. If you gouge it, I'm showing you things on purpose to say, hey, you can do it for 17 years and still make mistakes. What's a mistake? No. It's part of the process. Work with it. If you will, pardon me, to eliminate that process, don't gouge it. It's actually not that bad. There's a hump right here. There's a lip. 
Here and here, it's pretty much level. It's just that lip that folds it and roll over. Mm -hmm. I'm being precautionary, so I'm going to get rid of that heat gun this area up. Okay? So 99% um, of the time, I'd say you can't do it. But if you want to follow me through and see that process all the way through tonight for a little bit, I'll let you stay and watch that. Just don't tell anybody to let you stay after hours because I'm not supposed to be doing that. But if you want to see how I'm going to finish out this with the heat gun and get rid of it, you can stay and check it out. But you don't have to stay past that period when I'm not okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scott works graveyard as well. So, questions on what you guys have seen or what you guys are going to flow with next week, what you're going to do and sit down. I'm not saying you're going to have to try both of these. Pick one. Play is probably the easiest because you can always just play it. Yeah, you just keep playing it out, right? Probably, like I said, in 20 minutes or so, I'm going to come back in and hit it again and make it go down because it will come up that simple. It will try to come up. You know, but I'm going to literally come in with the heat gun and get this to where it's not going to fall down on me, to where when I'm going back and forth, and then I'll just leave. spread it. Yeah. You got tools out of there. Just don't put them away dirty. <laughs> okay, and I say that with all sincerity. I don't know any of you, even though I know some of you. I don't know what you're capable of. I don't care what you're capable of. I'm going to teach you what you're capable of. And you're going to get experience that for that. I invite you to check out the tools. I mean, um, second week or whatever when I trim this up, and I'll probably do second week. We'll do the third week when I start going to sectional because I'm only going to do a part of the sectional. I'll have that first part up, and then I'm going to start going up with another section. I'm not going to try to pull out for a whole section of base spray. I just want you to see the techniques. You can sit down and do it. So I'm going to actually have that bottom section. I mean, you could actually turn this into a sectional base right now. If it stops and say, hey, you know, I'm going to take this and keep it for a sectional base. I might do that. I mean, do that. It's going to work really well because of how thick it is. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Just keep it for that instead of just trashing it. I have to fix Kathy's mess up on it, but it's okay. Um, otherwise, you know, when you guys come in, you'll see that area started. And then you're going to see me attach and how you actually attach a section to that piece and what you do and how you grow it and move that pathway. Third week, you're going to see the same idea, but you're going to see it done with the play extruder. I'm going to bring in either my play extruders from home. Remember the big blue one, if any of you see it in the back of this have, I have one identical to that. And I have custom dies for it that help extruder parts. And we also have an extruder part that I made for this and the one in the back right now. But that way we can start extruding the parts and you can grow your extrusion parts as you're, throwing. as you're throwing. So you're going to see two different ways of doing sectional pots. But if you can get the basic fundamentals down with what you've seen today, centering the large amount of pot, even if that's all you get out of this class, everything else can start to come to you. But if you can learn how to handle larger amounts of clay and not hurt yourself by any means, that's what you're looking for. To be honest, if that's one thing that you walk away with, that's what I want. Because it doesn't have to be a huge, impressive piece. Just learn to control what you're using, you know? And you don't have to use light as, as best as possible either, you know? I mean, this could be even left like a clock or something. I mean, there's so many options. Think about what you're doing. If you just sit down at the wheel, kind of like I did tonight, with no real idea where I'm going, it's hard. It really is. Think about it. Know what shape you're going for. So like when I come in next week, if I keep this, I'll probably turn that into a globe type shape, you know, and then maybe color it in and come back up. That would yield you that because you've got the girth room down here and you can see what shape is the inside. The ball, right? The outside will ultimately match the inside for your shape if you've turned it correctly. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. Any questions? Besides the tool question, you guys are welcome to use my tools, like I said. Um, just make sure that they're taken care of. And then even when I bring in like the other part of my toolbox, you know, you'll see there's a whole several sections. The only part you guys aren't really going to get to explore is the glazing process. It's just like anything else when you're glazing. You got to think outside the box. If you go too big, you clearly can't fit this into a bucket. Don't ask me how. You can put it into a larger bowl and pour your glaze on. You can paint it on. You can spray it on. So we're not covering it. That should be something that's covered in your basic class. Quite simple. Now I'm going to tin glaze. <laughs> Making a chips and dip tray? Yeah, lots of chips. You know it, dude. Party back. So, questions besides those? Yeah? Or? 
I think the questions are going to come next week. Yeah. yeah. But as far as what you may need to go home, because I know you're going to go home with everything you've seen, because I talked to you for three hours. What did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, you're going to you're going to go home and think about those things and write them down if you can. Take a pen and paper and jot them down, so it'll, that way you don't have to think about them. Next week. Are you going to attempt to trim this one or? Yeah. I'm gonna finish it out like I said. I'm gonna level it out. But if I level it out, I'm nervous that it'll collapse, right? Right. So in order to do that, heat it up. Right. And then you won't have it collapse. Make sense? Right. So how do you get to here? I don't know why you want to draw. No, I don't. I stay here and draw all night with you, man. <laughs> don't do that. We'd be in trouble. <laughs> We'd both be in trouble. The sun would come up. I was already <laughs> out till four in the morning firing a wood kiln over the weekend. So. Oh man. I used up my late night already. Had several of those. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. Other than that, like I said, I'll allow you guys to say if you want to just watch, you know, yeah, maybe heat it up and be my guest. Because um, technically you're not supposed to be in here, so don't get hurt because then I'll really be in trouble. Don't slip and fall, don't do anything crazy, right? But I'm just going to run the heat guns so it'll get loud. I'm going to heat up essentially two areas of the inside at the same time. Nope, not even worried about it. Yeah, I know this is as part of this is actually coming down to the yeah, you're noticing an undulation. So yeah. what's happening is as I went down and I compressed that area, I felt it telling me, hey, I'm a little soft, I'm gonna give. So what'll happen is I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun one time and be able to come in and touch it and get it right where I want it and then leave it alone and then heat it up more so I can come back and forth. But it's telling me there's a soft spot somewhere in the clay and it's gonna give. And once it gives, it's gonna go. Yeah. So that's why it's it's fine. You're not cheap. I mean, this is just a normal tool. If you want to get to a point without losing it, check. Oh my God, keep practicing. Throw less and less water, all that good stuff, and it'll be fine. You know, it's, it depends. Everyone's got tea. Mine is different than Robert's too. You know? I mean, how he's gonna throw it is gonna be different than how he gets it. Well, they say that the least amount of water that you use, the more the more it's gonna hold up. You know, it's, it's not gonna have. You're saturating it. As Robert put it at one point, and I thought it was a great analogy. It's like acid. It's eroding away the clay, and it really is. You can see when you get the connection. Yeah, between the clay particles. It's no different than that thing we said when I was telling him about compression. Now he's going to question me. That whole idea, and as you nick it, and it's work with it. Okay, I bumped it. Who cares? It's just clay, right? You just can always fix it. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. There are points where if you're going to start doing big stuff like this, you might want to start thinking about making big wasters. Of your own, we don't supply wasters like that. You ladies out of here? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to walk through the car? Are you okay? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So come prepared to throw when you guys come. All right. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. The uh, the other thing that I would add to it to uh, if you're really looking into getting into making big stuff is exactly what Jason's talking about. If you want to get good at it, you got to do it a lot. Because the other thing that's making the clay really soft and wanting to flop is the thixotropic nature of clay. So the more you work it, the softer and softer it gets. So if you want to throw a large and you want to throw it consistently without any wobbles, the faster you get it done in the less least amount of moves, the more consistent your pieces are going to be. But the only way to get fast at it is to make a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But the more times you do more pulls and pull and pull, every pull is making the clay softer and softer, not just because of the water, but because of the energy you're putting into the clay. Um, and that's what leads to a lot of slumping when people try to throw taller pieces, and that's what ends up flopping when you're trying to make wide pieces. Um, so remember when you guys were giving me a hard time about pulling it up in two poles and it was that tall? It's because you're trying to move as much as you can. Yes, because you got into the, like I said, I'm a power thrower, and since I did production stuff, well, it too, that it but it, it, it kind of tears it, but not so much. If, you, if you're gentle, I'm not going to lie, I'm really rough with it in that sense, and I'm applying the pressure, and I'm telling you're going to move. Plus, when you're applying the pressure inward, it's going to tear slightly when you're moving that much clay, unless you use a little bit of water, you know, it'll help. Mm -hmm. So, but try to move as much as you can, like I said, in less movements, that's the other reason. Not just because I'm, it n has nothing to do with you saying, look how much clay and look how fast I can move it. You're literally trying to work it, like you said, as in less money as possible. Because it's like I said, in and out, like I said, that bank job idea, in and out. Because kind of threw me with that whole thing with the baby thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, <It's exciting. laughs> yeah, it, it, the idea is, is in and out, get it done, because the more you work it, it's going to become overworked. That simple. Well, have you ever seen somebody that's trying to throw taller? And, and I don't know why eight inches is the number, but they can have four pounds of clay or they can have seven pounds of clay. 
and they'll pull and they'll pull and they'll pull and they'll measure it. It's seven inches or eight inches tall. And then they'll pull and they'll pull and they'll pull and it's eight inches tall. And because the clay's been pulled so many times, it's overworked, it literally cannot stand up it's under its own weight. Down. And you'll watch that, for, if you watch somebody that's doing that, you'll watch them make the pull, and they'll grab a big chunk of clay at the bottom, and as they're pulling about halfway up, it's you'll see back. all the clay sink right back down into the bottom. And it doesn't matter how many times you pull that clay, it's never gonna get taller than eight inches, unless, you stiffen it up with a heat gun or let it set up naturally, and then you can go back and do some pulls. But if you sit there and keep working that clay, it'll never get any taller because the clay's been overworked and it cannot support its own weight. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's why, yeah, when you start trying to move into bigger, three to four pulls generally is the rule of thumb. If you can't get it done in three to four pulls, you're gonna either need to dry it or you're gonna have to let it sit and, and stiffen back up. And as I said, you just don't have time for that, right? Invest in something like this. You don't wanna wait for it to I use a big blow torch at home. When I throw large, I don't have patience to let it sit around here. Exactly. Uh, one way you can do it, though, if you have enough studio space, like if you come in on a day that, that nobody else is in here, throw three of them at a time. Yeah, because then you can go from one Because then, you, the then while you're working on one, the other two are giving you time to up. stiffen up and, and all of that. So, yep. so you can move back and forth. And that's one way to let it happen naturally. But you have to distract yourself. Because, it's not like because if you boil. don't, you're going to go back and work on it too soon. So you, you have to you preoccupy yourself with something else you're working on. Mm -hmm. So that's simple. Any other questions? Robert has some good chimes. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> like I said, if, if I didn't have my class, I'd be in here just just to see how you just do things. See what I'm doing. Doing. You might have a little trick that I don't want to sit on him. That means be better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I already have competition. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just hitting the area that I'm worried about it slumping down. I'm going to work all the way from that area up, okay? I'm not going to necessarily do the outside so much for one reason, because I know that that splash pan is on there, and I'm worried about melting the splash pan. If I wanted to do the outside, I would remove the splash pan at this point in time. Are you just hitting your right where the face is? Like, you're the face. What was that, Philip? You're hitting, you're hitting right at the end of your base, actually. Yeah, pretty much, exactly. Okay. Another thing that I would mention is a lot of the rules, they don't apply. They, they go out the window when you're working large. So, oddly enough, I was over at Andy's, making a throw in a big pot, and it was, I was putting the fourth 12-pound section on. Now, I'll admit, I've been drinking some beers. <laughs> my hands were covered in slip, the bat was covered in slip, I had already thrown the section, I was flip, I flipped the section over and went to put it to see how it was going to fit on the pot that was already built, the pot was already about this tall, so this was going to be, the final section, the overall weight of the pot was going to be 75 pounds, but it didn't quite fit, it was a little too narrow, so I'm like, okay, I need to take this back off, I need to bring that top in a little bit so it's going to meet this section. I lift the section off and I need to flip it over to set it down and to drop it on the pot. The bat sliced a big gash down the pot about that long. So I scored it, I smushed some clay in there, seamed it back up, and re it. It worked. If you look really close, you can see where you made the mark, but I was already like three hours into making that pot. I wasn't starting that way. Yeah. So I'm not going to follow any of the rules of throwing pottery. I'm going to make that thing work. <laughs> well, like so, I said, find what the limit is and push it. And that applies to the same idea. What was the limit? It's what you've been shown or told or you believe is the idea. But after that point, you can test it. I mean, honestly, test the limits and see what they are and then test them a little bit more. Totally. How tall was that part? Uh, it's about, about that tall. About that big around. It was going to go in that wood firing, but it... Didn't, didn't make it, it was too big. Too big? Well, the students were at Case Price. So if I hit that one outside, long as I'm guiding, you know, I had it out there in case. The right direction, it would be okay. Oh, it's like a small piece of it. It's like a black stick, so long as I guide it, it makes sense. <laughs> so is that just like ash? It's still there? It's okay. uh, we did, we did, uh, did, there was a wood ash, you know, getting on the pots, and we did add 10 pounds of soda at the end. So it's got, you know, actually, two big guns like this, it makes your life. Yeah, he's probably just as good as doing a book. Well, you took some pictures. And if you really want to get into doing stuff, you just have to go patience. You need to have your own hand building and stuff. 
sun. Yeah, just sit there and like, I'm waiting on the sun. Then I'm not paying for this energy. I mean, you are. There's got some good orange peel on it. the outlets. You don't even need it. I eat them in the home to when I'm blazing. Yeah, you can see the sun coming in. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, just know that there are consequences at certain points, and that's why I started out with classic. I did was showing you what are the consequences when you break certain rules. Those are about so the rules next that I found that I cannot break. Yeah, the, I yeah. cannot break with four So it came out pretty good. And like I said, if you look, um, like if you, that, as I was doing if I tell you that, you could search on the pot and you'll see maybe wet a little imperfection spot where, like, where I seem to back up. I didn't tell you it was there. Don't do that. Just face that side. I'm going to start with your outside and talk to you if I get rid of totally that area um, without collapsing anything. You see how it's got that slight wobble? Philip points it out and notices it. It's not the end of the world. As I come back in, I'm going to hit it one time and get it to go away and then don't touch it again. Do you hit it down or you hit it up? I'm going to go all the way from the whole area. Right? So, And I'm not applying any 10 pound water because I just want this to slide. Like the last couple times, you've seen I just drop water on and not mm -hmm. there. Not doing it, I just want to give it a little lubrication. Okay? So I'm going to come back in and hit it one last time and get it to just go where I want it and call it a day with the shape of the outside. When I do that, it should be okay. okay. So you can look away. In that sense, it's not perfect right there. But are you going to know when it's stopped and it's glazed? Nobody's ever put it on a turntable. Again. Remember what I said about that ego thing right up front? I said it. Yeah. Who are you doing it for? Robert gonna know, you gonna know, or who? <laughs> you know? It looks like that wobble might be, it looks like there's a slightly thicker spot in mm -hmm. your lip that's, yep. that might be. And it's probably um, where I bumped it. Oh, did you have to yeah. do a fix? No, I bumped it with my knee. So oh, yeah, yeah, that's probably it. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, you can see it right there. So, and that's another thing where you could come in and you could cut that off and then re fix it with your chamois and it might disappear. It just might be the surface area. And it, the other thing is, if there is a thick area, why cut it off when you can trim it off and make it thin and disappear later? Yeah. And it's probably just visually, if you look at it going around slow enough, you might see the clay expand like he's talking about. Other than that, no, I'm not worried about it. So now that I know that it's set in the sense of not going crazy wobbling, now I'm going to come in and hit it good though. So then I can go back and forth right here and just level that out and get it to a final shape. Other than that, we am going to probably fix this piece so I can actually use that as the beginning of a sectional pot next week. Or not next week. I was wondering what weeks. happened to that though. To that bowl. Yeah, I showed them what not to do oh, okay. so they can see what not so to do on something. So, the other thing I find that when you run a heat gun though and you run it, it on the same um, outlet as a pedal, you know, like this wheel, it changes when the wheel is going to engage on the foot pedal because it's taking the energy, the electricity out of the foot pedal of the wheel in that sense and, and how far it can operate. So, where I've been used to it, Engaging when I turn it on, it's not there, and I'm kind of like, ah, oh, where is it? It freaks you out a little bit. So just be aware that when you look up to the same outlet, it changes where that foot pedal engages. Have a good night. Yeah, Scott, I'll see you next week. Come ready to, to do your thing in here. <laughs> and really, I don't even think that. It's thicker, it comes out. So as I hold it, it's off. It's doing a, it looks wobbling and it's not actually wobbling. What's happening is it touches and then you see it pulls away from my finger and it touches and it pulls away. If I cut that even, it looks absolutely perfect. But do I really care? No. I'm not worried about it. So that energy thing, uh, when I go out into my garage in the morning, like at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, if I didn't turn my wheel off at night, it's pretty good. Because the energy pull. Because the amount of energy pull in the morning is not as much in the evening, and the evening is when I set my pedal. Yep. So it will be creeping in the morning, but in the evening when I turn it on, the rest of the it's power is using enough energy that my wheel doesn't run. That's fine. Yeah, I see the first time I walked up to the garage, it just 
So next week when you guys come in here, I'll show you where your work is gone so you can know where to put your pieces and stuff. Like I said, this class, I gave you as much thorough information as possible and I knew you probably wouldn't have time on it either. So it was a trying to get time. I had it really too. What's the play? You know what I mean? All the older two plays landed together. No one was buying it, we had to do something with it, you know? Um, the scope and the whole? What? It's the, um, the whole of the, um, yeah, the two play. Yeah, the old the two play. I just took everything and blended it all together. I haven't thrown anything that big with it, but all the smaller stuff I did with it, I thought it was like, Why went really big with it? I took, like, <laughs> a stupid size bat. About three of those lockers up in height, I just never took any pictures of it because Jess was like, you're just being a freak. <laughs> um, you know, like to post that. And I was like, no, I'm not. I want to shut some people up and give them a hard time. And she's like, and that's why people think you have an egotistic attitude. And I was like, well, if I can do it, why not? But you know, Jeff, did you ever look up Jeff Blanker, the guy that I told you that can throw like 300 pounds and he did it at NCK and stuff like that? He's pretty good friends with me, and he was one who's just giving me a hard time saying I could or couldn't do it, and I could do it with less poles, and I could do it with less play but not go as big as him. And I did it, and I sent him the video of it. I just sent it to you just for fun, but it's on a back, and it's out of this clay. So this clay's already been worked, like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Twice, essentially. I mean, this is reclaimed for right. reclaim, you know, if you will. Mm -hmm. But it, the back itself is, like, this big. Mm -hmm. And then I threw a bowl slash plate on it, and I mean, I can't put my arm. It's like stupid, and it's thin, it's thin like this, but when this guy does his stuff, he has walls that are like that big, you know, and it's like, it doesn't... You might have been the one I saw. You made, you uh, made it like that? Yeah, the same idea, idea, the same technique, it was just pulled and it was nice and thin out, so I stretched it and stuff like that. You know? I saw a video or pictures of somebody who threw a 200 pound bowl at Nsika. It was probably Jeff. Was it My first thought year? was, that's not a very big bowl for 200 pounds. Yep. Yep. It's it, just it, more it impressive. Was really, to... really, it had way too much clay in the bottom. He didn't get all the clay pulled up. Yep. Um, I was just looking at it. I was like, I think I could make that bowl with a lot less clay. With about 100 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Maybe. Maybe. So, I'm going to go back to my room here so I can put it down you know, if I want to and not bump my hair. Be aware that your splash pan is thick. Okay? So, I'm coming back in. To work that clay where I need it to. And I'm not trying to really, if it, if it tears and does something like that, it tears. Work with it. It's not the end of the world, right? I promise you. It's okay. If Robert has a different chime in, you know, let him chime in. I don't know how you feel about that. Don't work no, with it. No, work with it, right? There's no rules. Yeah, generally I just don't worry about stuff like that because it's just going to work itself down. You see how I'm able to come back in with that rib and all of a sudden define a foot area near the bottom of your plate? And pretty much there's no water in there, right? What were we talking about earlier with that whole compression thing in the water? It's really what you're getting rid of. Right? So you can see it's undulated. That's where if you use a soft rib, you're going to have the undulation you start to happen. It's going to kind of have a mind of its own. But you can get it into a shape to where it's not going to do that so much, right? 